Hello and welcome to this thought for the day from the Chapel's Royal, Her Majesty's Palace and Fortress, the Tower of London. Greetings and good health to you wherever you are. Today is Tuesday the 2nd of November 2021. I thought that this week I might think a little bit about how as individuals we can make a difference in the world. I should add I'm thinking about making a difference for the better rather than the worse. I suppose that many of us struggled a bit with this as we were growing up and were encouraged, for example, not to be wasteful. How many of us were told to eat up all our cabbage, broccoli, sprouts, stringy meat or whatever because somewhere in the world there was a starving child who would be glad of it. Most of us reacted by thinking, if not saying, that the starving child and children were welcome to the revolting greens or gristle or whatever and we'd happily give them up for them. Our logic was impeccable, but we were missing the point. The point was that to waste resources is in itself a bad thing, even if our own consumption of every unlovely scrap on our plates hardly benefited anyone else directly. The reference to the starving child was probably well-intentioned, but it did not really get the message across to our young minds. And I wonder if that partly explains our difficulty as adults in wrestling with the idea that our own small actions can in fact make a cumulative difference to the wider world. I heard on the radio someone who describes herself as a climatarian. A climatarian. This means that she chooses what foods to eat by considering their environmental impact. She now eats half the amount of red meat that she used to because cattle farming is a major producer of carbon dioxide. She also minimizes the amount of dairy produce that she consumes, milk, butter, cheese and yogurt, because they too derive from cattle rearing. She did not say it, but I assume that when she does buy meat, she sources it as locally as possible. I mean, it would make little sense to cut down on your steak consumption, but continue to buy New Zealand beef. Well, that all seems simple enough, but like most things in life, it gets more complicated she advocated a much more plant-based diet. Asked about the carbon footprint of an avocado delivered to her door by bicycle, she replied that nobody in this country should be eating avocados at all unless they're grown in the UK. If we take that to its logical conclusion, we should not eat any imported foods, whether British farms alone could produce enough food to feed the British population is highly doubtful, but let's suppose for a moment that they could. What impact would that have on the producers of, let us say, avocados in poorer countries which rely on their exports to make a living? Producing all our own food would presumably significantly lower our carbon footprint, but with the consequence of impoverishing others on the other side of the world. It seems to me that the case of food production, local versus imported, can tell us something useful about the difference between being righteous and self-righteous. Being self-righteous has recently acquired the unattractive label of virtue signaling. It means telling others how virtuous we are, and often in my experience doing so without regard to the factors that might affect people other than ourselves. Righteousness, on the other hand, seems to me to be about doing the right thing because it is the right thing rather than because it makes us look good. But being righteous also surely means being just to others, which in turn requires us to look beyond the immediate and local and to grasp the long-term and distant. Now, I think democracy is a good thing. Government of the people, by the people and for the people, motherhood, and apple pie. Yep. But democracy involves elections and elections involve politicians in saying things that make them popular in order to maximize their votes. Invitations to self-sacrifice, to giving things up for others, to accepting less than we have been used to having are seldom vote winners. Politicians like to be popular. What the current climate change crisis requires is for politicians to act like statesmen and stateswomen which means risking short-term unpopularity for the long-term benefit of all. We can do without the virtue signaling, the self-righteousness. What we need is 
righteousness, doing the virtuous thing, because it is the virtuous thing to do. At the risk of repeating myself, an increasing likelihood at my age, we want our politicians, we want our states people, we want everyone in the world to love their neighbours as themselves. They must recognise and proclaim what needs to be done in our own interest, but also to see that it is in the interest of all. In cutting our use of fossil fuels, in reducing the carbon footprint of our food production and distribution, in accepting changes to our diet and way of life, we must also take into, into account the impact on those across the globe who depend on trade for their livelihoods. This, of all times, is a time for righteousness, not self-righteousness. And we are, as it happens, all in the same boat, spaceship Earth. And there really is no planet B. So eat up your British greens, but don't forget the poor avocado farmer.